Welcome back, everybody. This is Roy McQueen from NC Tech Lucians, and hey, I, I like how you guys are still hanging in there. So look, we just now breaking in, breaking the ice with the jQuery Mobile. So in the last video, I showed you how to set up jQuery Mobile and create a page with a header and footer. Now in this video, I will show you how to create pages. But wait, first off, there's one thing I want to quickly show you how to do, and that is change the header and footer theme. By default, jQuery provides five different basic color schemes or combinations called color swatches. We can create our own as well, and we can change the color swatch of a page, header, and footer. And what you do is you set the attributes like so. And just to let you know, I'm not going to be testing this on the emulator, uh, so just because it's too slow, I'm going to be using an old Android phone running off the old Android version 2.3.4 so there might be some variation in the screenshots now uh, let's get into the meat of the discussion I wanna go ahead and talk about pages it's an object written within a div container which has the data row attribute set to page now this container gets displayed on the screen and could contain a header uh, page content and also a footer you can also embed various HTML5 controls and widgets within the page. Um, now you can either have a series of individual HTML files each representing a single page or you can have one HTML file containing multiple page div containers within it. So just add a new HTML file inside of our www folder and name it page2. Let's delete the contents of this file and go ahead and copy everything from our home page, which is our index file, and paste it to our page two. And then we're just going to modify the contents like so, like I'm doing here. As you can see, all we're doing here is we're getting rid of all the things that we don't need and add our page to div container, header, footer. And inside the contents, we add a link to take us directly back to the previous page. And what we do is we set the data rail to back. Now, in reality, it's always better to use URLs in the href of the anchor links but for this example we're doing it just like this and if you notice we set our data row attribute to button which will automatically create a button for us now how cool is that huh but now what we need to do we need to go back to our home page which is the index.html and add an anchor link to the page too and also style that as a button also Now let's go ahead and run it. And as you see, we have our links to our two pages. We have our button and we have another page. And we can link right back to page one, which is our index. Now let me show you how to create a multi-page just using one HTML file. and this is fairly simple here all you do is just create another page below our first page and in the first page link to the second page in the href by adding a pound sign in front of the name of the second page
Now when you run this, you'll see that uh, once we click the button, it takes us to our second page. And that's on a multi-page layout right there. One benefit using the multi-page style layout is that all the pages are already preloaded into the DOM. So pages don't have to be fetched like in a single page layout style. Now the reason why this makes a difference is because you'll see as the app grows bigger in a single page layout you'll have a load spinner as the app fetches for a page and in a multi-page layout you won't see this but we can easily deal with this in a single page layout just by using the data prefetch attribute uh, and you do this inside the anchor link now a word of caution right here you want to be careful using this on too many pages because if you remember that you know developing for mobile devices that memory is, is a scarce resource and another way that you can increase performance using a single page layout is to use the DOM cache you want to use that on commonly visited pages in your app this will help because during the navigation process each new page is fetched and stored in the DOM but is also removed once you navigate away from it even if it's prefetched the only page is that, that stays in the DOM is the first page. Okay, now there's one obvious thing we need to fix before I let you guys get out of here. As you probably notice, we have a lot of empty space below the footer. And all we have to do to set the footer to sit at the bottom of the screen is for each page, we add a new data attribute called data position. And we set the value to fix. So now when we run it, we have a more desirable look to our app. Okay guys, that's it for this session. In the next video, we'll go into dialogues. Peace out.